Yeah, my name is Chan Zhi Li. I'm from the Department of Polymer Science and Engineering at Zhejiang University. Before start, I should thank the organized committee gave me this opportunity to present my work here for the GOPW 2016. The title of my presentation is the Searching Process for Conducting Materials for Polymer Source Cell and Pascal Source Cells. Okay, why the conducting material should be bothering us? If we look back, the endoping, like doping of the silicon source silicon materials are one of the most important strategies to lead the success of these silicon semiconductors. For instance, like the atomically blending the phosphine atom into the silicon matrix, which can provide the extra valence electrons to make this um, like the n type dot the conduct conduct silicon and to make to further make it into the PI junction the solar cells, the silicon source cells. And uh, we okay, the organic semiconductors, the even they have lower uh, charge carrier density and also the lower charge transportation properties. And uh, for doping of the organic semiconductors are much easier, usually just require physically blending the Dopant and uh, into the si si organic semiconductor matrix, and uh, which just require additional redox reaction, which like the dopant can don donate one electron for its LUMO or for its HOMO or SOMO to the LUMO of the n type semiconductors, which is, means n type doping. But the challenge is. Since the energy require, end level requirement for the doping is rel relatively rise up high, so which makes make the doping material relatively unstable. Most of the material require vacuum processing and also unstable in ambient. The material structure is complicated, requires multiple synthesis. And uh, in this presentation, we, are, we want to elaborate some of the recent our findings that are the unlike doping, they are searching possible and also stable in ambient, can have a low cost and easy accessibility to make this material can dope the like foreign and some anti-material into the conductive materials. And what we have to do? And at the early stage, we just want to develop some ionic foreigns which can buy the, the PEO side chain and also some ionic like periodic moisture attached to foreign, which can make foreign non power foreign dissolve into a methanol. So this one can be also kind of solvent processing on top of bulk junction source cells, make uh, some efficient electron transport layers, which indeed works work well. With the thin layer of the this surfactant layers, we can use the high work function metal as silver, work as the electron collecting electrodes. And both shift of the device will see and GSC feel better to lead to higher PCE. But when we check the material property itself, we accidentally find this material in not just the, this ionic material indeed that contains some reticle fluorine, fluorine reticle on line into it. So when we testing the can that transporting property, if we look at the, look look to the PCBM, this is typical semiconductors. Uh, which means the material itself, the uh, current are really gate voltage dependent, higher, in higher gate voltage we applied, so we can induce higher current. This is a typical n type uh, mobility measurement. If we didn't apply any gate voltage, this material nearly insulating the conductivity showing the 10 to minus 10, 7 per centimeter. What happened to the ionic foreign? Okay, this material not any gate, the current not dependent on gate voltage anymore. It's quite like open channel and semi-metal transportation properties. The conductivity can as high as to the 10 to minus 2 sine per centimeter, which is 8 magnitude or the higher than the intrinsic PCBM. And this ionic foreign can be fed up into a PCBM, makes this PCBM a semiconductor transient from semiconductor to the conductor. And this material also have good compatibility to the PCB and CF. We, as, we, as we can see from, from here, the from the doping range from the five more percent to the 15 more percent still can allow us to fabricate the nice smooth thin film. The conductivity can be improved grandly up to the 3.2 sample per meter here. And but the neutron, the neutron foreign didn't achieve any doping effect. 
And how about let's separate the ionic stuff and the fluorine stuff? We run them some model reaction. Just use the uh, here use the tetrabutyl ammonium fluoride as a doping, doping into the typical n-type semi semiconductor solution. Here is a TCNQ and another PCBM. As we can see here. As we can see from here, TCNQ can be transcended from the neutron to the TCNQ radical anion based on the new absorption and also the uh, EPR singleness. But the fluorine is a little bit different. When we add even 200 equivalent of the tetrabutyl ammonium fluoride into PCM solutions, they didn't really show the new type new solutions, new absorption peak. But when we concentrate this solution, to the solid state, we can detect that the PCB and radical are not actually generated, which means the solid state, the charge, trans charge, charge transfer from the T buff to the PCB are really occurred. And the similar experiment also have been observed in people different group. Like here, people uh, proved that one. The Hydroxide and fluoride can actually transfer to the here the PDI, another typical n-type semiconductor material, and even can reduce the silver ion to the silver atoms. And if we take a look, there's some very nice uh, electron trans electron transfer layer have been de developed so far, like the PFN or even the PIE, all they are contain some similar moieties, ammonium and also anion. We are suggesting maybe the pens of these anion things can have some interface can doping to the bulk junction, the PCBM in the bulk junction layer, maybe have provided additional function to optimize the interface property of the opioid source cells. And after this understanding, we run some calculation and suggested that if the anion itself grandly approach to the C60 core, actually this is energy thermodynamic favorite process. Like the if the close the distance close to 0 0.3 nanometers, this is a typical pipette stacking distance. They have a charge transfer state from the anion to the PC to the C60. But if we further get the closest distance, the energy just significantly increase, which is an energy in favorite process. And uh, another experiment we saw, besides the iodine, acetyl, and the bromide, fluoride, and hydroxide, all can have an uh, electron transfer to the PCBM, show the conductivity, show transcend the PCBM from semiconductor to the conductors. So we're suggesting that possi po possible doping process are the change transfer complex, like as shown in 0 0.3 nanometers, these structures, they are can further dissociate into an electron transfer species generate some foreign and cystic radical anion to intrinsically improve the free charge density inside of the PCBM layer, make, which convert the semiconducting PCBM or C60 into conductor. And uh, not only the foreign, and recently we found out some n-type semiconductors, not only the ammonium salt and the phosphonium salt, like here the bromide, also can show some doping effects, which can change just from the typical n-type semiconductor change after doping into the phosphonium bromide salt, which can convert the semiconductor to the open channel semi semi-metal transporting behaviors. And the shearing conductivity as high as 0.4 simon per centimeter. And uh, besides we're working on the doping and uh, also the uh, semiconductor matrix, we found out and uh, the well-organized n-type semiconductor also quite uh, critical to further improve the conductivity of the same film. Here we are using some solvent-solid interaction for promoting the bad molecular arrangement in solid. Due to this ammonium, this anionic fluorine itself is a, have a non-polar fluorine core and also have the polar and ionic moiety. This is methanophilic part. This is methanophilic part. This is my, so this is amphiphilic behavior building iodine. This one we process from different solvents, from non-polar solvent, from the polar solvent, are showing different film morphologies. So what we have to do? 
to use this soluble material in, this material in soluble, is soluble in methanol, we further add some small amount of insoluble fluorine into this FPI1. We found out FPI1 on the TEM, this, uh, this is a non crystalline same film and the term image and term characterizations. And after a small amount of the like FPI2, 3, C60, and also metal containing C80, they are all can induce the FPI1 into a crystalline same film. What we suggest is due to the non-soluble part, if we want to bring the non-soluble part can be dissolved in the polar solvent. So for need to reorganize and tightly pack it together and cover all the non-soluble, insoluble fluorine and bring into the fluorine, bring into the methanol solution, which can produce kind of the ordering and the tightly packing fluorine very moist. So based on the conductivity measurement, we found out that um, the intrinsic FPI is showing the still good conductivity, but after blending 10% of the non-insoluble materials, we can significantly improve the conductivity of the same film up to the 0.68 same per centimeter. Besides all the candidate conductivity measurement, if we understand all the fundamental world well, we found out even after cut off all the side chain, blending the ionic frame with the PIE, we can develop some nice electron transfer layer for the inverted organic source cells. This material are just required methane processing and also mild and temperature annealing. We found out yeah. just with the PCBM itself, without the, in the transit time device testing, without any gate voltage, the TPCBM is intrinsic 10 to minus 11. The, dense, the current is quite low, nearly insulating property. If we put a, just in the feature layer on top PCBM, the current can be improved to 10 to minus 6, which means suggests there has some interface doping to improve conductivity of the interface. And if we test further into OPV device, we found out that this OPV device is not a sensitive to the electron transfer layer thickness anymore. The device even from can be ranging from 16 nanometer up to the 15 nanometer. A device performance are intrinsically the same, which means this conductive and also transparent electron transfer layer not really sensitive to the processing condition may suggest they can be further used for the, some large scale and large area fabrications. And uh, besides of that, we further develop some cost linkable fluorine, which just bearing may small just the cost linking function group, but the, the major active materials are really the C60. This material has some crystalline packing and solid, can be further blended with some foreign salt. So after cross linking together, this one will produce a stable and a ro robust electron transfer layers. Based on the different ratio of a dop different doping ratio, we can modulate the device VOC from low to the normal value and also improve the performance. But some just neutron doping have been used, suggest this material without some online, this has not has no any doping effect and no effect on device performance improvement. Okay, here we can due to the foreign materials. Previous I showed quite a lot of foreign materials. Due to previous I trained type so well on the foreign chemistry, we can develop from the monomer to monofunctionalized beads and try and texture and even paint and decay function of fluorine. This really a fluorine material really nice, but uh, recently we found out fluorine also have some quite a lot of drawbacks like the absorption and they have a poor energy and chemistry tunabilities. And uh, recently some nice progress have been made like develop some also new type of non fluorine except that showing really nice performance in the OPV device. And uh, in our work, we also found out that like some low cost industry dye, here we're using DPP, coupled with the uh, spiral fluorine, they uh, can produce some non fluorine based electron acceptors, even work be much better than the C60 when pairing with the PCST donors, the VOC can be up to the 1.14 volt high and develop the power conversion efficiency uh, around 5.16%, 5, 5 which is higher 
for the PC uh, for the PCB and based bulk junction layers. More importantly, we found out that one, this non-crystalline materials can deliver some very thermal stable morphology for the bulk junction layers. If we continue aligning the the, this bulk junction layer based on the non non new type of non firm material, which uh, can maintain quite stable performance. But firm material, uh, they are aggregate very fast and uh, quickly decrease the device performance. Besides that, we further extend this study by collaborating with some physicists. We are looking to the charge generation and recombination with the transient absorption spectra and also to measure the CT absorption and try to understand the fundamental world and this uh, later on we hope can reward some bad design rule for us to develop some new type non firm materials. For here I want to introduce some of the new study we have conducted in group. Here is some imaging perovskite source cells. As we know perovskite materials usually drop the ABX3 uh, formulas. These materials are quite nice to the intense absorption on um, bipolar charge transporting property. And more importantly, this, pro this material after the absorption light, they are generating a may loosely bonded uh, excitons, which only require minimal thermal energy driving, can dissociate into a free electron and a hole. And uh, if we take a look, with, uh, only with uh, several years of development, the performance always rise up to over the 20% power conversion efficiency. But if we go back to take a look, the, all the charge transporting materials to pair with this very efficient semiconductor, this semiconductors are really not updated structures like as we're showing here, spiral omitted and the PTAA and the PCBM. They are kind of the adapted from the previous like Dyson saw cell or the opioid materials. But to pair with these materials, we thought the new type of the organic transport material are really need, like the, the need to embed with the new function functionalities. Like this material should be have suitable energetics and also have work function tenability at uh, the device interface. And more importantly, we thought this material should provide a suitable surface with suitable surface energy can help the crystal the Pascal crystal grows. And besides that, we need the different individual layer can selectively extract the charge out. The material, the individual material itself need the efficient charge transportation properties. And uh, how about this material can further pass away the defects of the Pascal? We thought all this functionality should be considered when we design a new type of the charge transporting materials for efficient Pascal solar cells. Okay, we have did some work in this area. First, we embed some, develop some dawn and uh, accept based uh, foreign transfer layers. We, what we want to do, we want to incorporate uh, uh, just uh, a polarized excited state for the PC, for the foreign. As we saw here, if we uh, in, incorporate some TPA or bromide TPA with the PCBM, they are showing large excited dipolars as we calculate. Yeah. And we also further, we further observe that one in this device, if we drop the same device configuration, the material showing the large excited dipolar can each can show higher charge, uh, short, short current density, which means can more efficiently extract the charge out, and the large, uh, the large excited dipole, and also consist, consistent with the higher photocurrent we can obtain, which su suggests this uh, material, the foreign material show large excited dipole may have some do some positive effect to help extract the electron out. And besides that, we also have some work I work to on the whole transport material design. Here we are looking for some really have few nice face and packing materials. First thing we screened is uh, for with C3 symmetrical token structures, which can have a face on collaminal orientation grow onto a substrate. So we want to calculate, we want to incorporate this functionality in the whole transfer materials. 
We first installed the ohmmeter structure into the truxen core. This one shows in the planarized and the fully conjugate uh, hole transparent materials, and the materials itself adapts the C3 geometry, showing the intrinsically uh, higher symmetry. And uh, this material itself are nearly transparent in the visible and the near IR range, and uh, the energy level can better match with that of Pascal. More importantly, we found out this one provides a non vertible the water non vertible surface, which indeed do some good effect to promote a crystal, crystalline Pascal growth to get some dense and a dense Pascal same film. And as we further test under the PL emission spectra, we found out that one, this, uh, this new hole transfer material can effect, efficiently quench the emission of Pascal. If we further annealing the hole transfer layer around 150, the nearly can quench all the emission of Pascal and showing a shorter uh, excited lifetime for the Pascal materials. And in the real device, we use a two step processing method to fabric, fabricate Pascal source cells. We found out we can even achieve the in a, this PI and junction, this heterojunction, the heterojunction Pascal source cells. We can open, obtain the power conversion efficiency around 18.6. And uh, okay, and this. Above content are all the presentation content, and here some pers perspective for the searching process of same field source cell. As we saw, more and more work have been done. Like from the industry part, they like Mitsubishi Chemical, they demonstrated large area oak pure module can be developed into as a building integration source cell can be attached to the construction the building service. They develop some zero energy building concept and like the work done by Professor Krebs and his, co his colleagues and demonstrated. We can even force the row to row to production of the same field organic source cell and the deployment of this organic OPA module also can very fast and uh, through a low cost process. And uh, in my vision, I think from this maybe a moment now, from, uh, for us can transform from uh, scientific research to the technology innovation. One cycle probably we still follow the fundamental research, we can incorporate the material and the processing device to find out the deep mechanism to produce the more efficient materials. But another cycle probably we need to decide how to further translate from a small scale fabrication to large area fabrication and make large area module to further develop into the building integration like photovoltaic solid cells. And thank you very much for, for your attention and that's all for the ten oh thank you very much and uh, thank you very much for your attention. And uh, at the final part I need to uh, Thank my collaborators, Professor Jian at the University of Washington and Professor Chen at Zhejiang University, and also Professor Ichinak Mura for at the University of Tokyo, and also financial support from China. And thank you.